great light dawns in Galilee. Some say madman, some say king. Wonder working rebel priest. Jesus Christ the Nazarene. He knew well what it would take To free us all from sin and grave A perfect man would have to die And only he could pay that price Friday's good cause Sunday's coming Hope a Sunday is coming Devil, you're done, you better start running Friday's good, cause Sunday is coming So we let those soldiers take you in As his friend betrayed him with a kiss That is broken. 
right, good morning, church. Let's get up on our feet. It is Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, and we want to celebrate the eternal life that God has given us through Him. Amen? Amen. Let's clap our hands like this. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul. This bag of bones And I try with all my might But I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting
to be here to celebrate that we don't serve a dead God, but a risen King, and His name is Jesus. I also want to take a second to just say, um, you know, we are one church in two locations, so welcome to our Weston Vaughn location as well. We're doing one service today. Some of our team here has been serving at Weston Vaughn since we launched on February 11th. And so we're grateful to see the whole team here united as one church, because that's what we are under Jesus. And so the Bible says in Matthew 28, verse 1, early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. So David, give me like a nice roll on the floor toms, nice and loud. Right? There's a nice earthquake. Yeah. And it says, For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. And the guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women, Don't be afraid. He said, I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. He's risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come and see where his body was lying. Come and see. Come and see. There's an invitation that extends still to this day to come and to taste and see that the Lord, he is good and his love endures forever. And so as we worship today, um, you know, we're not here to talk about who we are as Weston. We're here because of Jesus, and we're here for Jesus. You know, if, if you leave meeting some wonderful people, that's great. But the desire of our heart is that you would leave with a divine encounter with Jesus, knowing who He is. And that's our prayer today. Would you bow your head as we pray and just offer this morning to God. Father, we thank you today that we've come. Lord, maybe some of us, we were invited to come. Maybe we have family that um, said, hey, I'm going to pick you up and bring you to church. It's Easter after all. But Lord, we are here today, not by chance, not by accident, but I still believe it's by divine invitation to come and to see. And so Jesus, would you show yourself to every heart that is longing, every heart that is maybe even broken and hurting today. And we thank you that the grave is empty and we serve the risen King of Kings that with, at the mention of his name, Jesus, you said there's all authority in that name. And so in the name of Jesus, I speak freedom in this house to worship you, that there would be joy today because of what you've done for us. And so, Lord, we love you. We thank you. Receive all the glory now. It's yours alone in Jesus' name. Amen. So church, we're going to continue to worship the Lord.
turn the grave into a new beginning. Our God is risen, you're alive and breathing. There's nothing greater that can
out again and we're going to do it. when you said Jesus and he said it is finished that he meant what he said and Lord I thank you that everything we would ever need for this life has been given to us through the person of Jesus Christ and what he accomplished for us so today Lord with hearts full of thankfulness we just say thank you Jesus come on church would you open up your mouth and if you are thankful, just say, thank you, Jesus, for the price you paid. Thank you, Jesus, for what you accomplished for me. Thank you, Lord, that death didn't have the final say. The cross has the final word. And so, Lord, today we stand. And, Lord, I'm reminded of that scripture that says, the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of us. So Lord, I thank you that we are not looking for the next victory or even for another victory. Lord, that you conquered it all and in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. So Lord, I thank you that as the church of Jesus, God, we are united, but we are victorious. We are triumphant and mighty in battle. And so Holy Spirit, I, I speak to every heart and I would ask that you would canvas every heart today and Lord knock on every door of every heart and and I, I simply speak to every heart now be open be ready and be receptive to receive the eternal seed of God's Word on this resurrection Sunday and so Lord we will be careful to give you all of the honor and all of the glory it's yours it's yours and it's yours receive it we pray in Jesus mighty name and church if you believe it would you say a mighty amen today amen and amen and amen well happy resurrection Sunday Weston uh, we're going to turn on these house lights and we're going to give you about 20 seconds why don't you turn and greet someone and wish them a happy resurrection Sunday as well and then you can find your seat this morning Amen. 
You know, normally we would have some announcements and housekeeping things, but today we're going to skip that. Is that okay? The only thing I want to take time before we get into God's Word is to just introduce myself. My name is Jonathan. I'm uh, the lead pastor at Weston. It's my privilege to be the lead pastor. And I also want to say, if you are new to Weston, perhaps you're visiting uh, you're from out of town, we would actually still invite you to look in the pew in front of you. There's a connect card and there's a QR code. The simplest way is if you have a smartphone, you could scan it. If you've never done it before here at Weston, it's just a way of letting us know, hey, I was here, I was visiting, maybe you're a first time guest, maybe you're here today and you want to know more about our church. It is a simple way that we can respond to you via email and let you know a bit more about who we are as a church. And so you can uh, scan the QR code, or if you want to grab the pen that you'll also find in the pew, you can fill it out. But please, I say this every Sunday at our church almost, because we have people who fill it out with a pen and never actually hand it in. Don't be one of those today. Uh, I kindly ask you to, before you would leave, we have our guest services desk just to the right as you would exit the sanctuary and just hand it in or we'll have ushers. Just find someone with a lanyard. We'll be happy to uh, take that and uh, follow up still the same way via email. Amen? Amen? It means a lot to us that you would take time to come to church. And uh, I'm not here to make fun of people who only come because it's Easter or Christmas. All I'm here to say about that is if that's you, it doesn't matter. I'm happy that you're here. Because in my opinion, this is the best place to be, especially on a Sunday. And so, if you know Weston at all, we love to worship, we love God's Word, and we love Jesus. And obviously, we love one another. So what we've been called to do. And uh, my responsibility today is to bring you God's Word. And my responsibility is to do it faithfully, and obediently and to not twist what God has said. So today, um, with God's help, I want to speak to you about the finished work of Christ. So if you take notes, and I encourage our church to do that. If you're new, you can still do that. Even on a smartphone, it's okay. Uh, do it. And so the title of the message is The Finished Work of Christ. And I'm so grateful that God finishes what He starts. Can somebody say amen? amen. You know, I, I can't say that I always finish what I start. You know, food on my plate, no problem, most of the time. But projects and tasks and things, I don't always complete what I start. But here's what the Word of God says, that He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. So I know that some of us are just on a journey. And some days with Jesus, we get it right. And other days, we get it wrong because we're still following our own sinful desires. That's not God's plan. That's just our sinful nature that we've been given. But I'm so glad that there's a verse that says, God is still at work if you would just allow Him to finish it in your life. And so maybe you being here today is an, a perfect opportunity for God to continue the work that has already begun in your life. John 19 verse 30 says this, When Jesus had tasted it, they were offering him sour wine on the cross. He said, it is finished. And then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. You know, on, on Friday we had an amazing production called Forgiven, and we had a packed house, people who gave their lives to Jesus. Yes, and thank you to everyone, Pastor Sum and Liana, who wrote the whole script, directed the whole team. We had 35 people involved, whether they were seen or in the background behind the stage, setting things up, putting mics on, on actors, all of that. And so we saw some of these depicted, but one of those scenes when Jesus says on the cross, it is finished. And then the Bible says he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. That word finished is actually translated to this, paid in full. Paid in full. And so today with God's help, 
I want to speak to you about the finished work of Christ and what he actually accomplished for you and for me. And so through his death, burial, and resurrection. So we're not just saying the fact that he died. Scripture says that he was buried in a borrowed tomb. And then he rose again on the third day. And I love the significance that the tomb wasn't his. It was borrowed. Because he wouldn't need it much longer. And so the resurrection is a reminder for you and for me that the grave is still empty. You know, there are other religions and people, you know, you've heard me preach this not too long ago. Where Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except through me. And so... You know, when people hear you talk about God, they don't have an issue with God because they go, eh, I have a God too. I believe in God too. But when you talk about Christ and, and, and use the name Jesus, suddenly you see the walls come up quickly and, and people say, eh, keep your Jesus to yourself. And, and I could respect, hey, it's your decision. And I respect if you're asking me to stop, I'll stop. And I'm not here to force anything on anyone, but I'm here to present what God said about his son Jesus. And so Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So when I look at other religions, and I haven't studied them all, I'll be very honest with you. But everyone who had like this, we we follow this prophet or this person, they're all still dead when they got old and passed away. Some of them because of sickness. But Jesus is the only one who rose from the dead. And the the evidence, I don't have time to go into all of it, but we actually heard it on Friday. The evidence is also that he he was seen by over 500 people all at the same time. So that's in the book of Corinthians. You could read that. So either more than 500 people all lost their minds or he indeed was risen from the dead. And so he spent time, he met with the disciples. They were all afraid because they knew he died. But they, they couldn't yet wrap their mind around the fact that he said, but that's, death is not the end. It's just the beginning. And so today in the time we have, through his death, burial, and resurrection, I want to share with you and give you three things Jesus accomplished for you and for me. Three things Jesus accomplished. Number one, the power of sin is broken. The power of sin is broken. And so Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Because first you have to understand that there is a problem called sin. And the Bible teaches that sin separates us from a holy God. So if I have sin and I, we've all been born into sin, we're going to see that in a second. God wasn't happy about that fact. And that's why when he sent Jesus, he sent Jesus to reconcile us back to God the Father. But there is this problem of sin. And if there's a problem of sin, then that problem had to get dealt with. Amen. So Romans 5 verse 12 says this. When Adam sinned, the first man. Sin entered the world, and Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. And so the scripture will explain, if you read the full chapter, how Adam is actually a symbol or a representation of Christ who was yet to come. And so now we're going to continue, we're going to jump to verse 15 in Romans 5, and it goes on to say, However, there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. Can someone say amen? Amen. Verse 16 says, And the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of that one man's sin. For Adam's sin led to condemnation. But God's free gift, say free, God's free gift leads to our being made right with God. Even though we are guilty 
of many sins. Verse 17 says, For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and His gift of righteousness for all who receive it. So you have to receive it. Yet you receive it by faith. But listen, for all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death. How? Through this one man, Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's John 14, verse 6. But we will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. And so the power of sin is broken. The hold that sin has on your life or had has been broken. And so when we use that phrase, the power of sin, it's referring to our rebellious, sin-loving nature, which we've all inherited from Adam. And so it got really quiet. So either you don't believe it or you know it's true. <laughs> but the reality is, when we look at what Jesus finished on the cross, when he said, it is finished, he said, the struggle is over. You don't have to bow and be a slave to sin, but instead you're a master over sin in your life. And so look at Romans chapter 6. Just turn one more chapter over. And I want to read to you. It's good that I actually get there. I've been reading off my notes, but I want to get there. Sin's power is broken. And so in verse 4, I want to start reading here. It says, for we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father. Listen, now we also may live new lives. So if you get saved, you come to Christ. You say, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. We had people pray that prayer and make that decision on Friday. And today, in just a few moments, I'm going to give you an opportunity, if you don't know Jesus in a personal way, as Lord and Savior, to pray. What, what, maybe you, you've heard it called the sinner's prayer. It's not a formula. The Bible simply says, when you confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. You believe in your heart, God raised them from the dead. Those are the facts. It says, when you repent from your sin, you turn 180 degrees and say, Jesus, I was living like this, but now I'm living for you and I want to follow you and make you Lord and Savior. You receive him by faith. The Bible says you are a new what? Creation. That means the old you is not the new you. The old problem of sin is no longer, a, has no hold on your life anymore. If you are brand new, whatever is old is not attached to you anymore. Can someone agree and say amen? amen? And so if I'm a new creation, this is what it says, now we also may live new lives. That says, well, the old me struggled in that way, but I'm thankful for the grace of Jesus Christ, which enables me to not fall sin uh, to fall into that temptation and sin in that way again. That, that nature has been erased from, from my life. I am a new creation. So verse 5 goes on to say, since we've been united with Him in His death. So there's a dying to self, to the old self. We also will be raised to life as He was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ. So that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. No longer slaves to sin. Verse 7 says, For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we also will live with Him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and He will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. And I'm reading this because I don't want you to just hear from my mouth. I want you to hear the scriptures. Verse 10. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So also, so you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin 
and alive to God. How? Through Christ Jesus. And here's a great reminder for us who are already saved. Do not let sin control the way you live. Verse 12. Do not give in to sinful desires. That means those desires might still creep up. Because we still are flesh as well as the Spirit of God in us. But it says, do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give, give yourselves completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. And I love verse 14. Sin is no longer your master. For you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. So point number one, when we say, you know, when Christ on the cross said, it is finished. And what did he accomplish for you and for me? Number one is the power of sin has been broken. If it's broken, it's broke. It shouldn't, have, it shouldn't work in your life anymore. And so the idea of all of that, if I could sum it up for you, because there's a lot of scripture and I make no apology for it, is this. Treat your old life as dead. And that's how you live this new life in Christ and in dependence upon Him. Sin is no longer your master, verse 14 reminds us. And I want to read one more passage on this point, and then we'll get to point number two. In 1 John 3, verse 8, it says, But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil, who has been sinning since the beginning. But I want you to hear this part. Some of you already identify and relate maybe with what I just read. But I want you to catch this last part. But the Son of God, someone tell me his name today. Jesus. Jesus. But the Son of God, Jesus, came to destroy the works of the devil. He came to destroy the works of the devil. And if Jesus said, it is finished, that means he already did it. And so I'm not waiting for my next victory. I get to choose every day when I live in Christ to walk in the reality of that victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the... Yeah, okay, choir director, <laughs> let's stop right there, right? We, I grew up playing drums to that song and hymns like that, but, but the, the, the truth of those songs, they're, they're rich in theology, but it's scripture. Yeah. We just read it, so point number one, thank you Jesus for what you accomplished on the cross when you said it, it is finished, that the power of sin which held us all captive at one point. Even if I was born in the church, there, there was a day where I had to choose to surrender my life to Christ. Hear me, younger people in the room. There are no grandchildren in the kingdom of God. He is our heavenly Father, and there are only sons and daughters. And you and I get to choose today who we serve. And so point number one, the power of sin has been broken. Point number two is I am restored or reconciled back to God. Right? If sin separates me from God and he broke the power of sin, then simply put, that relationship has been reconciled. So how could sinful people come close to a holy God? I'm glad you asked. I want to read scripture to show you and for that, We're going to read out of Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. And in verse 19 it says this. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy holy place. Let me just stop for a second, and I don't have too much time to get into it, but when, when God decided to send Jesus, he actually said the old covenant was good for what it needed to do. But in effect, 
When Jesus came, he said, I'm putting in effect a better covenant. Why? Well, because people sin all the time, they would have to kill animals and offer them because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. So in the Old Testament, the priests on behalf of the people would kill the animals and that blood had to get sprinkled and used because that was the Old Testament system, the sacrificial system that God put in place. Now when he sends Christ, he says, I've enacted a better covenant. Why? Because when Christ died, he did it once and it's good for all time. And so you and I, when we sin, guess what? Jesus does not have to die again and again. We said the power of sin has been broken. It's already done. And so it's up to us to realize and recognize. And then every day we say, Jesus, I will walk in that grace, which enables me to sin no more. And so Hebrews chapter 10, we're reading it. It says, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain of the most holy place. That's where the high priest would enter. But he's saying, wait a minute, that curtain now is open for you and for me. And we can boldly enter the throne room of heaven where God is. So verse 21 says, and since we have a great high priest, Jesus... He wasn't only the sacrifice, but he's also our high priest who rules over God's house. This is what we ought to do now. Verse 22. Let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled now with Christ's blood to make us clean. And our bodies have been washed with pure water. And I love verse 23. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. So I am restored and I am reconciled back to God. Once was born in sin, but when you give your life to Christ, you're a new creation and that bridge has been built because of Jesus that I can have a relationship with my heavenly Father. In fact, when the disciples were with Jesus, they said, Lord, they could have asked them many questions, and they did, but one of the main ones that I love are, Lord, teach us to pray. Yeah. And he, Jesus instructs them to start with relationship. He says, our Father who art in heaven, not our judge, our scary big God. He said, our Father. And that signifies the kind of relationship that God desires to have with us only possible now because of the finished work of the cross. And point number three, what Jesus accomplished for you and for me, is that I have a hope and a future. I have a hope and a future. And I'm going to invite the whole worship team to come back. This is... You know, we're leading into a time of communion. And it's a time where we remember what Jesus has done. And Jesus said, every time you do this, remember me. God keeps his promises. And so in this point, I have a future and a hope. John 3.16 says, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have what? Everlasting life. And that speaks to eternity. We will live forever. Though we die here, we will live forever in eternity. And there is a blessed hope that we have as believers in Christ. Knowing in John chapter, um, my brain is, uh, John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. If you read through that, you'll see where Jesus says, hey, I, I got to go and I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, you might be also. Amen. If it were not so, I would have told you so. And so when we talk about a future and a hope, yes, it affects life here and now. But more importantly, it's where we will spend eternity and be with him forever. And so that's John 3.16 reminding us of God's love that whosoever, you know, as I look around this room, beautiful people are here today. Beautiful people. And I know sometimes, we, you know, in church world, we talk about our Sunday best. We come looking good. We're done up today. It's Easter Sunday. All of these things. But 
I'm no fool and neither is God that deep down some of us come with deep pain deep sorrow that there's grief there are broken relationships in our families perhaps in our marriages in our home maybe disappointment in our career there are so many things and so many different factors for each and every one of us but we have a loving God who cares who says hey don't play church he said you've come this far today and I am here to give you a future and a hope I'm here to make sure that if you lay your head down on your pillow tonight you can have peace in knowing where if you pass and you have your final breath here that you will live forever in eternity you know a lot of times people think well I'm a good person pastor I, like I don't do bad things I'm very generous I'm kind and, and I say that's awesome but the Bible doesn't actually say be good it doesn't say be good and go to heaven and if you're bad be careful because you'll go to hell if heaven is a prepared place you know and Jesus spoke about hell as a real place as well and here the Bible doesn't say good people go to heaven bad people go to hell the Bible says having a relationship with Jesus because he said I am the way the truth and life no one comes to the Father who is where in heaven except through me that means if you don't have a working relationship with Jesus Christ a moment in your life where you surrendered your life to him and said Jesus I relinquish control and I want you I want to follow you and I invite you to be my Lord and Savior today is your day today is your day and and on this point of I have a future and a hope this is what he's done for you when he said it is finished he also said the way has now been paved all you got to do is walk in the way did you know early Christians they weren't called Christians they were called people of the way because there's a certain way about Jesus that once you start following him it's not the way of the world the Bible talks about a broad highway if you will with a big gate it says many people but that's the gate of destruction that leads to hell and it talks about a very narrow road and it says few actually find it because it's a hard road to walk on and but it says that that road and that gate leads to eternal life and Jesus was telling us don't be fooled don't follow the masses and the world and the crowd and the culture follow Christ and follow his way and I have a future and a hope and in first Peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 5 it says praise be to God praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ in his great mercy listen to this he has given us new birth into a living hope we sang it Megan sang it earlier Jesus Christ my living hope so he's given us new birth into a living hope how through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance say inheritance that can never perish spoil or fade this inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in this last time in this last time you know I've been to funerals where there's wailing and mourning and it's actually the sound of deep sorrow and regret why because I've walked in and, and I, I know this what the missing piece I, I could tell I've I've been in ministry too long I've been to too many funerals I've also been to the bedside at hospitals where people are getting ready to take their final breath some of them from our own loved ones from our church and I'll tell you the stark difference you walk in and there's peace you walk in and the family's there and yes we feel the pain and sorrow but we don't mourn like those who have no hope the Bible says I have a future and I have a hope 
I've been to the funerals and I walk in and I go, the missing piece, it's so obvious to me, but no one here has a clue. It's Jesus Christ, my living hope. I want to read one more passage. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. You know, death, it's a, it's a real thing. The Bible says it's appointed for each of us to die and then the judgment. But, but hear me, death isn't the end. Death is the doorway. The doorway to what? To where? Eternal life. And so in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13, it says this, And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died. Listen, so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. Guys, I have great news for you today. If you don't know Jesus, I'm going to give you that opportunity when I finish reading this passage. And you can have a future and a hope aligned for you as well in eternity. And listen, verse 14 says, For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again. So there's a condition there. you got to be a believer. And what do you got to believe? That Jesus died and rose again. Isn't that why we're here today? To, to celebrate that the fact that the tomb is empty that he's been raised to life again. It says, we also believe when Jesus returns, God will bring him back with, excuse me, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. And here's the order of this resurrection. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. You know, my mom died when I was 23, but that's why I have a future and a hope. I don't grieve like those who have no hope. I, I grieved. I cried a lot with my dad and my sisters, my family. But we know one day we're going to be reunited again. That one day what, what hurts here is going to be made right again and restored again. It says, then those, then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Caught up is that word rapture. We will be raptured. That's the next thing that as the church we are waiting for to happen. We're faithful on earth to the mission that God has called us to, but really with great expectation, we await for that glorious day. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord. We'll be raptured again. And here's what it says. We'll be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And get this. Then we will be with the Lord forever. And it ends with this great encouragement in verse 18. What do we do with this information, the, this reality? It says, so encourage each other with these words. When you think about eternity, it's not to evoke fear and emotions of fear. Instead, you should be encouraged today that God made a way for you and for me where there was no way before. I'm going to ask you and invite you to stand to your feet today. Remember when the tomb was empty? We opened the service today where they said, come, come and see. There's an invitation to come and see that the tomb is still empty. Today, I want to end this Resurrection Sunday message with an invitation for you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you just heard the sermon, you heard the scriptures. Three things that Jesus accomplished with his death, burial, and resurrection when he said it is finished number one the power of sin has been broken number two he reconciled you back to him he made it possible and number three to give you a future and a hope but here's the thing you you now have to receive Christ it has to be your choice I'm not here to force you I'm just here to lead you to make a decision and in fact Here's how I'm going to do it today. I'm going to count to three. Why? Well, because when I hit number three, you get to decide. 
And I'm not here to judge. No one here is to judge. But we saw people on Friday make this commitment to the Lord. In fact, every Sunday almost, we give this invitation. Why? Because this is His invitation to you. But I'm just His mouthpiece. So within the sound of my voice, if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today it's very simple. You're choosing to repent your choice. Say, Lord, I've been following my desires, my sinful desires, and I, I choose willingly to turn. And when you turn, you're not just aimlessly turning. You're turning 180 degrees towards Jesus Christ. And you're saying, I choose today to make Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. And then you receive Him by faith with the confession of your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And by believing in your heart, God raised Him from the dead. So on the count of three, if I've basically identified where you're at and you know you might feel this uneasiness in your stomach and you're like oh, I don't know what's going on here that's the Holy Spirit who's actually convicting your heart conviction is a good thing condemnation is a bad thing condemnation wants to bring you down to say you're no good you're a sinner conviction says hey hey this is not the life you've been called to live receive Christ and, and be made whole, be made brand new today. And so if that's you, without further delay, when I count to three, just slip your hand up real quick. I just want to acknowledge you, and then I'm going to lead you in a prayer. So on the count of three, you raise your hand. You say, Pastor John, number one, I'm ready to receive Christ. Number two, I'm going to repent of my sin, and here we go. Number three, I'm going to receive Him by faith. Lift your hand up. One, two, three. I see that hand. I see this hand, brother. Thank you. Anyone else in the building? I see this hand. Amen. I see that hand. You could put them down. Anyone else? We're just going to give a moment. Your lives are going to be forever changed. You walked in heavy. You leave light. You walked in a sinner. You walk out a saint. Not because of our own merit or ability but because of the power of the cross and the blood will never lose its power. So your sins are going to be washed away in a minute when we pray this prayer. As you confess your sin, the Bible says He is faithful and just to forgive you. And when He forgives you of your sin, He doesn't hold it in front of you as a reminder, but the Bible says He removes it as far as the east is from the west. That's how far He removes your sin when we pray. And so for those who lifted up your hand, this prayer is for you. And I ask that you would repeat it after me. Mean it from your heart. And in fact, I'll invite the whole church so they're not the only ones praying today. But like a mighty choir, let's pray this today. Knowing we have a God in heaven who hears our prayer. So say, Heavenly Father, I come to you now. Thank you for the work of the cross. Thank you for what Jesus did for me on the cross. When he hung and died, and he said, it is finished. I confess my sin, and I repent of it now. And I willingly choose to turn to you, Jesus. My desire is to follow you, Jesus. And so by faith now, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I believe in my heart, God, you raised them from the dead. And so by faith, I receive you now. Thank you, the old me is dead and gone. And thank you for raising me to new life again. And thank you that I'll never be the same from this day forward. Help me to live for you. In Jesus' name. Come on, can we say a great amen with all of those who've prayed that prayer? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to give you some instruction, but I'm going to just ask deacons if you would just go and prepare, uh, get the trays with the elements for communion.
But here's what I want to say. If you prayed that prayer and you meant business with God, I have a very simple uh, two next steps for you. Number one, there's that black connect card I referenced earlier. W would you actually fill it out? And on it, there's a box that you could check out. You could do it digitally too. But it says that I've decided to follow Jesus, a first time decision. And we want to come alongside of you in your inbox. If, when you fill that out, we'll email you an ebook. It's a, our gift to you. It's written by a friend of mine. His name is Sam, and it's called Following Jesus. It's, these are your next steps now in this new life with Christ. Why? Well, it's a new week in front of us, and you're going to see some of the same old people, but you are not the same anymore. So there's a new life that you've been called to live, and that ebook is a simple guide to how to live for Jesus, how to begin to pray. And, and cultivate these daily habits that Jesus said should be a part of your life now as a believer. So would you fill that out? That's number one as a next step. But number two, you need to get connected to a church. If you're a visitor with us today, and maybe you don't live in Toronto, um, fill it out and let us know that we're, we'll be happy to connect you to a church that is a Bible-believing, Jesus Christ-centered church. Um, but here's the other thing. If you live within the vicinity of the GTA, I just want to say Weston is one of the great churches that we have in the city of Toronto. And I want to extend an invitation to come back to say welcome home. Uh, we would love to have you again. It would be our joy and privilege. What we're going to do now is something special as believers that we get to do. We're going to partake in Holy Communion which is uh, something that Jesus said we should do. And when we do this, we remember his sacrifice, but we also remember what he did on the cross and everything I just preached on. When we hold these elements, as they're gonna be passed out, the team is gonna lead us in a song. But as we, I just ask, hold these elements in your hand and think about the finished work of Christ, everything that he accomplished with his body being broken, with the blood that was shed so that we might be healed and whole. You know, I'll add one more benefit to it because I want you to think about this too. I didn't have time to preach it, but I wanted to tack it on here. It's not a bonus. It's part of what he accomplished for us. The Bible says that by his stripes, we are healed. Part of the finished work of the cross is that we believe in divine healing that if I'm a new creation, I don't have to be sick all the days of my life. That's not God's plan. But if he said I'm brand new, then I believe that everything that he paid for, that he defeated, I have victory. And I don't have to walk around sick. That doesn't look like victory. But I get to walk healthy and whole in the name of Jesus. And so we also remember that by his stripes, when he was whipped, by his stripes we are healed so we are also proclaiming that this is a miracle meal that as we remember the finished work of the cross if there's sickness in your body you take the bread and you eat it you drink the grape juice and you drink it remembering that you've been bought with the precious blood of Jesus to be not just whole in your mind not just whole spiritually but even in your physical body we're going to proclaim his healing as well. Amen. So if you are a believer, you don't have to be a member of Weston Road Pentecostal Church, but to take part of communion, you have to be a believer. That means you've made Jesus Christ Lord and Savior. So if you raised your hand today and prayed that prayer, don't let the cup pass you by. Take communion with us. Be a part of it and receive this wonderful meal that Jesus said, when you do this, remember me. So I'm going to invite our deacons to come and they're going to begin to serve and to pass out the trays and our team is going to lead us in this song, Oh Praise the Name.
his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone. sacrifice he made on the cross willingly giving himself for our redemption as you hold the bread for a moment in your hands consider the wounds 
consider the pain he endured all for the sake of our reconciliation back to God. The Bible says on the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread, gave thanks to God for it, and then he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together, church. the blood of Christ which was shed for the forgiveness of sins. It's a representation of the new covenant sealed with his blood that offers us eternal life. And here's what the Bible says. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. And let's drink together as we remember the blood that was shed. they would just continue leading us in this song and then I'm going to come up shortly after and then just give us some final instruction as we close this morning service. over us, but our Weston youth have gone above and beyond to prepare for us some goodies, and it's it's a fundraiser. I don't like the word fundraiser because I believe we want to bless them. Uh, they're getting ready to go to a youth retreat in a couple of months, and as we give, we are enabling young people to leave for a weekend to have an encounter with the Lord. That's the heart behind what you see in the foyer. But they took the initiative. They baked. Also, many of you donated baked goods, which I'm very excited about. But hear me. 
Uh, we have coffee that's available for whosoever wants it, no charge. But the baked goods, let's be a blessing to our young people. If you don't have a sweet tooth, you could still dig a little in your purse or your, your wallet and bless them. Amen? Amen. So we're going to pray. We're going to end the service. And then I'm going to ask the team to sing one last song. Is that okay, David? I want us to sing our way out of church today. And let Emory Village know that Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. So Father, we love you and we thank you. God, we give you our lives because you gave us yours. And I thank you that the grave is empty. I thank you that the victory is ours. And we go, Lord, out of this place knowing that you have already won it for us. And so, Father, I thank you. And we, we celebrate today the fact that Jesus is alive. And help us to remember that when we go back to work this week and back to school, that the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of us. So how can we but thank you, God? Thank you, Lord. We pray this today in the name of Jesus. And everybody says, and everybody says, amen. Support our youth, but David's going to take us out with one last song with the team. Amen, church. What better way to end up than giving God Jesus thanks? Amen. If you're feeling grateful, just clap your hands to the Lord Most High, the God who died for you and each and every one of you. Amen. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. Try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond. Hey, and just when I
master, I thank the Savior. You heal my heart, change my name, forever free. shout it because I didn't want to scare you if it's your first time but because we want to live out the love of Jesus wherever we go so Weston though the service is over God bless you go support our Weston youth and happy resurrection Sunday